In this lecture of surveying, we are going to see how linear measurements are taken. Okay, the topic is linear measurements. Okay, now see, there are three basic methods by which we can measure, we can have linear measurements. Okay, the first one is direct method. The second one is optical method. And the third one is electromagnetic method okay direct optical and electromagnetic now out of these three we are going to discuss the first one which is direct method of taking linear measurements see direct method me direct method of having or taking linear measurement means actually physically going to the ground and measuring the linear distance between two points let's say we are having two points point a and point b okay which are present on the field present on the ground or present on the site to be surveyed okay then we will be actually going to the site or field then the ground will be the linear distance will be physically measured to determine the length of a b okay the length of a b will be directly physically measured that's why the name direct measurement okay now we will see what are the various methods of taking direct measurements or linear measurements okay the first one is pacing okay the word pace means okay the word pace means the distance when a person takes while taking one step okay the average distance a person takes while taking one step okay therefore we can write average distance of one step of a person now see when we are saying taking linear measurements physically or directly going to the ground see what we do in pacing is let's say we are having a point a and point b okay now in pacing what we will do we will make a person to walk from point a to point b okay and while walking he will have to do one work he will have to count number of steps okay what he will be doing he will be counting number of steps while going from point a to point b and now what we can do by having number of steps is we can calculate distance between point a b linear distance between point a b it will be given by number of steps okay number of steps multiplied by pace of the person okay now see generally on average the pace of a person ranges from 0 0.6 0 0.75 to 0 0.85 meter now if we know the pace of that person and if the person has counted the number of steps for going from point a to point b what we can do let's say if the number of steps are 100 okay for the person to go from point a to point b the number of steps he took was 100 and his average pace or simply average distance between his step is let's say 0.75 therefore the total distance between point a and point b will be 75 meter okay this is how pacing is carried out now let's see what is the problem with pacing is okay see again we will see the example point a and point b is there and we are having a person to walk from point a to point b okay now see since the distance was that we taken was 0.75 meter and the number of steps were 100 okay now let's see if the distance between point a and b is too far okay then the problematic thing is the person has to remember the number of steps that he will be taking upon this path okay now this method this specific method of remembering the number of steps is tedious or boring okay and there may be a chance there can be a chance that the person may miss out or the person may get disturbed and he might not remember what was the number of step he was exactly taking at that point okay he can be he may get disturbed 
and he might forgot what was the number of step he taken and he might want to start from the starting point okay that's why this is kind of cumbersome or tedious or boring process that's why pacing is taken uh, when the distances are small okay pacing is adopted when the distances are too small okay otherwise when the distances are large we are having some other methods which are precise and which are accurate let's see the next method of having direct linear measurement which is measurement with passometer okay the device name is passometer okay just now we saw what was the problem with pacing that the person has to remember the number of step while walking on the path which has been set from point a to point b now by using passometer it is just like a watch or pocket friendly device okay now what the person will be doing he will be carrying the passometer onto his wrist or onto his body or on wherever on his pants okay then the person will be taking steps his average pace from point a to point b now what this passometer will be doing is the work of remembering the step that was in pacing is now done by passometer the passometer has a mechanism to note or to count the number of steps okay now we can have we can measure we can know the pace of the person to which we assign the task okay we can know the pace therefore what the passometer did was it recorded the number of steps and now since we are having the pace of the person we can calculate the distance between point a and point b n or number of step was given by this device it is just like a smart watch worn by the person which is walking from point a to point b okay therefore what we can have length ab or linear distance between ab can be given by n which is number of step which was calculated by passometer which was registered by uh, that passometer and pace can be found out for that specific person therefore what we can have we can have length ab okay this is the advancement in the previous method of pacing in which person had to remember the number of step now the work of remembering the work of noting down the number of step is being done by passometer okay the third method of carrying out linear measurement directly is pedometer okay it is advancement over the previous two methods which is pacing and passometer now pedometer is also nothing but a device which can be attached to the person taking walk over point a to point b but the only advancement in in this specific device is the person wearing the pedometer is provided with the pace of that person okay the pedometer device will be inputted with what it will be inputted with pace of the person okay the input that has to be given to pedometer is pace of the person and the second what it does is it calculates it record number of steps okay the pedometer also remembers the number of step therefore by inputting these two things okay the first thing that we have to input is pace of the person because with respect to person the pace changes a taller person a tall person has a lo long space such as 0.85 meter and a short person may be having a shorter pace okay which may be 0.65 or 7 depends okay therefore pace of the person which is going from point a to point b is first inputted to the pedometer and then the pedometer does its second work which is to determine the number of steps therefore by the usual formula what we can have length a b is given directly by the pedometer in the format of length okay directly the length can be calculated the length can be determined means we don't have to carry out the calculation that we previously did in pacing and, and when we use passometer now the pedometer is directly giving us the length therefore it is advancement over pacing and passometer okay the fourth method of determination of linear measurement is odometer 
okay now what odometer is see whenever we are having a vehicle okay then you can see a device on the dashboard which record which continuously record the distance covered by the vehicle okay it initially it is set at zero then as you keep traveling with that vehicle it gets it start to record the distance in kilometer or meter whatever you want then we are having other meter on the vehicle such as trip meter okay trip meter specifically calculates the distance covered in a specific trip we are now more concerned with this odometer okay see how odometer is used in field in the field we take a perambulator okay now see let's first see what perambulator is perambulator is nothing but a single wheel attached to a stick okay a single wheel is kept attached to a stick and the number of revolutions taken by this wheel and circumference of this wheel is known therefore the total number of revolution and the circumference are multiplied and stored to this device which is known as odometer okay what odometer stores it just stores the multiplication of number of revolution let's say n and circumference of that wheel which is being attached to the perambulator this device is what perambulator okay perambulator is nothing but a single wheel connected to a stick and this stick is operated by a person okay what the person will be doing the person will be carrying this stick or carrying this perambulator hold by holding this stick to cover the distance from point a to point b okay let's see this is a perambulator and a person holds this perambulator and travels from point a to point b okay now the perambulator records two things okay number of revolution and it has previously set circumference of the wheel okay therefore what it will be doing it will be converting the number of steps or revolution and circumference thus giving out a linear distance ab okay now see the problem with perambulator is in case we are having a sloping kind of terrain okay and initially what we we are doing we were making a person to walk over these two points okay from point a to point b therefore the distance was approximately correct between point a to point b now what this perambulator will be doing it will be physically contact contacting each and every point present on the uphill downhill slopes okay therefore what we are concerned with we are concerned with the linear distance between point a and b not the distance added because of the slope let's say let's try to increase the slope so that you are, you, you will be having clarity what the wrong is going in here okay see the slopes are let's say something like this okay now if we make the perambulator to cross over all these hills okay all these small hills then it will be noting down the extra distance between point a and b and what we are concerned with we want only linear distance between point a and point b that's why this is the problem regarding this perambulator or odometer method okay but it is more easy or it is more easy method and very convenient for a person to just carry that stick attached to the wheel and the rest of the calculation work is being done on the device itself okay now let's move to next method of direct measurement of linear measurement which is chaining okay the next method is chaining chaining means measuring the ground okay measuring the distance between two points by using a chain okay what we are doing we are either using a chain or we are using a tape okay we will be using a calibrated tape or a chain for taking measurement over the ground okay chaining out of this five method which were pacing passometer pedometer and odometer is the most accurate method and very much used in the work of precise or accurate survey okay the previous method the previous four method were used in recognition survey where the rough distances between two points are meant to be known 
okay or mean to be determined on the field now for accurate or for precise survey what we are doing we are adopting chaining and that is use of chain or use of tape okay the very precise distances between point a and b can be determined by running chain survey okay what we can do we can have a chain to be placed between point a and, a and b and the chains have predetermined set length okay therefore number of chains placed in between point a and b or the tape gives the direct distance between point a and b okay if you want to increase the accuracy then standard bars can be used okay standard solid bars can be used to determine the distance a and b okay so that was all about taking linear measurements by using the direct methods or by actually measuring the fields okay in the next lecture we will go in details with chaining okay till then bye